Good morning, my friends. Welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk. We are three best selling authors who spend 10 minutes with you talking all things bookish. And today, my hostesses with the mostesses are the beautiful and glorious Rachel Linden, the incredibly talented and has the best dog in the world, Catherine Ray. And well, I don't, oh, don't tell my dog I said that. And I am Marie Bostwick. And today our guest is the amazing Rachel McMillan, who has written this wonderful book titled The Mozart Code. Such a terrific book, but don't believe us. Rachel, tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, it is a historical romance, marriage of convenience set in post-World War II Vienna with flashbacks to Sussex uh, in England. And it's basically the story of two people who find love while working uh, with MI6 and a very interesting and complicated chess game with a supposed traitor that could lead to the downfall of the Iron Curtain. Uh, and it also uh, features, and this is the point of the title, um, the discovery of Mozart's death mask in a pawn shop in Vienna. So it's got a little bit of espionage, but it's mostly uh, my love letter to the cities of Vienna and Prague in the post-war years. It's all romance all the time. And it, well, it's, it is above <laughs> the average romance. That's for sure. You know, the problem though, Rachel, is you only just needed a little more plot. That's my only criticism. <laughs> <laughs> I never have plots in my books. People should know this by now. <laughs> but I was gushing on you before you came on with us today. Like every page of your writing is meticulous. You, it's, 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 it's like a class in how to write. <laughs> And uh -huh. I love your characters. I mean, this book really is a cut above. This book, you're saying it's historical romance. This book is literature. And oh, my that's nice. <laughs> the characters are so, they have issues and problems. And yet at the same time, they have that thing that I love, which is they have a, a funny side to them. And I am going to read a little bit from a section about Sophie, who I'm just crazy about. Like, I want to hang out with Sophie. <laughs> She's been wanting to do this all morning. Yeah, no. Aww. So, okay. So, everyone quiet, I'm reading. So, <laughs> Sophie's at a party. Sophie wasn't sure what inspired her to snatch another oyster in that moment. She only knew that it's that she set it in her palm, picked up a shucking knife, narrowed her eyes, and flipped the shellfish in the direction of Barrington's ear with the same precision that she took out partridges and badgers on one of her father's hunts. He swerved and settled his bright gaze on her with confusion. She quirked a smile and nodded in the direction of the French doors behind her. Then after replenishing her champagne, she slipped through to the veranda. It was a calm night and the moonlight teased the pond in the vast green outside her parents' sprawling estate. The stars were easily sought, their canvas a swath of navy. Pardon me. Oh good, she said to him, they didn't eat you alive. Did you just fling an oyster at my ear? <laughs> Sophie raised her thumb and index finger and simulated a quick reenactment. I have impeccable aim. I love this. <laughs> I love these characters. They're so real. The dialogue is so sharp and so witty and there is so much going on. And I'm supposed to ask you a question, but I'm not going to. I'm just <laughs> asking. That was fabulous and well done you. And Thanks. <laughs> You know, they're just, Sophie and Simon are just a delight, but I know Catherine has some questions. So, so my, my question is because I also loved your London restoration. Love and it, that's yeah. where we met Sophie and Simon. Yeah. So I want you to share with us how you want readers to think about these two books, how they're related. Do we, do readers need them sequentially or either way, or just how are you framing them? Because Not both are fantastic. I call them companion pieces. 97% um, of readers have said that who have been, who have met the characters mm -hmm. through Mozart code um, have said that it, it is a true standalone. Um, I didn't intend on writing Mozart code until I met Simon Barr, Simon Barrington. He sits down in the London restoration with my heroine, Diana at the Savoy. Uh -huh. And the moment he sat down, 
I had his entire backstory. I knew who he was. I knew he was the bastard son of the landed gentry. I knew that he had a really personal tie to the communist plot. Um, and I knew that he was a chess master. And so once I had all of that, I had to come up with a girl for him. And then I wrote my editor, Kim, who is really responsible, as is my line editor, Julie Schwartzberg, for the meticulousness in my books, uh, and said, Kim, I have to tell Simon's story. And then I've always wanted to play with that death mask. So yeah, long way around this question, but you can you don't have to read them in order. My, my truest hope is that you read one of them and want more of the other. Yeah. But yeah, one is all about do? Wren churches, the Christopher Wren churches and the cathedrals. And this one, the Mozart is the cathedral. The Mozart is kind of the grounding force in the book because I love Mozart. So, yeah. Good. Okay. I remember that scene when he sat down in the London Restoration. So well, we both love London. <laughs> and yeah, I'm glad now that we know how to pair these two together and readers can start with either one and have an enjoyable yeah fabulous experience so good and Thanks. we know also that you have meticulous research that you do meticulous yeah. research and that you love these gorgeous cities that we all adore and so it's so fun to be immersed in that and I love the London restoration so can you tell us a little bit about the research you did for this particular one well, I was very lucky because my research trip for this one happened just before lockdown. So December 2019, I spent three weeks in Vienna and Prague and there's cities I know well from previous trips, but that was all coloring in um, and painting the canvas of these cities so that they become true characters for the readers and for the characters in the book. Um, and while I was there, I did a deep dive in the things that were gonna be really essential, um, such as the communist plot, the fall of the Iron Curtain, chess, um, the obviously Mozart, and the way that, you know, Hitler forbid anyone from bombing Prague, which is this gorgeous old city that's still preserved. However, Vienna was bombed quite readily. So it's a lot about counterbalancing the archival research I have, especially of maps and the layout of a city. I had to do this with London Restoration too, and what they look like nowadays compared to what they looked like then. But when it came to Mozart, I read a ton of his letters um, because I found that was a more intimate way to get to know a composer I've already known really well. I did a really big deep dive on the uh, Der Messias, his arrangement of Handel's Messiah, which plays a major part. Um, and I auditioned my music as I do for all of my books. I listen to hours and hours of music. It plays into every book I write. And then I'm very meticulous in what, what pieces fit into the overall puzzle um so other than that it was a lot about the time period um the you know the, vienna was a quartered city uh by the british french the soviets and the americans so it's who was where when it was setting up my chessboard and then working all of the different pieces of simon's chess game out on a board and so that was nice. a lot of a lot of fun um that is so impressive. <laughs> it is amazing. Rachel, I feel like we, this is one of those books. There's so much going on here. And it's um, so hard to describe to people. <laughs> we, could have you, we could have you on for a long, long time and still not get to the end of it, but we are getting near the end of our 10 minute time. I want to ask you the question we ask everybody at the 10 minute book talk. What is bringing you joy today, Rachel McMillan? Spring in Toronto. I live in the most amazing walking city in the entire world. If you follow me on Instagram, it's just this one big yeah. love letter. And I have so many markets to go and shop at and so many new places to see. But also my I'm meeting my friend Bryn Turnbull in real life for the first time this week at her very much delayed book launch. Uh, for both the woman before Wallace and the last Grand Duchess. So I will be at a cocktail party with Bryn and that is bringing me joy because I have not met her yet due to Toronto's lockdowns <laughs> and um, when we met. <laughs> we've met her, so give her our love. She's yeah, she was fantastic great. on this. Yeah, I will. That's wonderful. Well, my friends, you have come to the end of another episode of the 10 Minute Book Talk. I hope you will join us next week. But you know what I hope? If you love a really good yarn, if you like to fire up all your brain cells and try to untangle a fascinating story with amazing characters and absolutely flawless writing, you need to go immediately and get yourself a copy of the Mozart Code by That's Rachel right. McMillan. Do it today. So Aww, thanks, thanks, thanks. We'll see so you so much, guys. Episode. Thanks, Rachel. Bye. Bye-bye.